What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is very special because we are checking out a brand new product from AMD. Actually, a couple new products from AMD. This is their new line of APUs, Advanced Processor Units, which means that it is a CPU with a built-in graphic solution. Actually, we're using RX Vega graphics here, which is very exciting. That, that means we're going to have some low-powered but uh, pretty powerful at the same time chips that don't need a discrete GPU to run 3D applications like your favorite video games, for example. Uh, of course, it's not going to be quite as powerful as a discrete graphic solution, but uh, these are much more cost-effective, and uh, we're going to take a closer look at them next week when the embargo for benchmarks actually lifts. Today the, the embargo is lifting uh, just for the unboxing, so we're going to do an unboxing because we can, not necessarily because we should. Um, it's just, just an unboxing. But we'll get to talk about the SKUs that are in here, the different products, and what they're made of uh, in just a moment here. I, I guess we should just sort of fire it off. Um, I'm gonna, uh, we've got some multi-cam setups going on today, so we've got a top-down camera there. Let's go ahead and rip the, ooh, Velcro, Velcro. Now I got a level with you guys. I've actually already kind of unboxed this because uh, I've already started my testing. Uh, testing is underway for this guy. So guys, apologies in advance if you see some of the packages have already been opened. First off, we've got some nice artwork. Uh, Rise in Powers, Ra Radeon Reigns, You Prevail. And it's showing us the two SKUs that are included in this package. We've got a Ryzen 5 4, 2400G and an AMD Ryzen 3 2200G. We'll talk about the specs on those in just a moment. This is uh, again showing you that we've got Ryzen. Uh, so we've got a Zen architecture here, 14 nanometer FinFET process uh, with Vega graphics built right in. Now this is not to be mistaken for uh, Ryzen second generation. These are still Ryzen first gen chips. Um, however, we are getting some, some, some nice features that aren't found on first gen Ryzen that launched last year. So for starters, this is what we've got. And uh, let's, let's, start with, let's start with this. This is a motherboard, a Gigabyte motherboard actually. I'm gonna move this aside. This is the AB350N gaming Wi-Fi. Let's take a look at the board really quick, you know? I mean, they, they made an effort to, uh, to package it in here. Let's take a look. Uh, clearly, I've already unboxed this. This is actually the board that I used for my testing um, for the benchmark video you see next week. It will be featuring this board, and it's a lovely board. Lovely little mini ITX guy. Uh, it's black and red, so hopefully that's, that's a color scheme that you're into. Um, but uh, we've got a Wi-Fi module. It does have Wi-Fi, which I think is very important for most mini ITX boards. There's an M.2 slot on the back, which I do appreciate. So, I mean, really, you can get a pretty darn small case uh, to fit everything inside here with that M.2 slot and having the graphic solution built right onto the chip. Um, you could actually have a pretty tiny little system, whether it be an HTPC or a light-powered gaming rig. Um, does have a full 8-pin uh, CPU connector. That's good. Looks like you might be able to do some, some decent overclocking here. Looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six MOSFETs. There's a, a little heatsink over that. And four SATA pl uh, ports, four SATA 6G ports. Um, little light on the fan connectors. We've got one, two fan headers. Where's the second one? Second fan header right there. Could have, could have used a couple more fan headers there, but uh, what can you do? Rear I.O., again, we got the, the Wi-Fi, which is lovely, and six USB 3.0 ports. No Type-C or anything like that. No Type-C on the, uh, on the main, main board either. Two DIMM slots and a full-size by 16 PCIe slot. So you can use these CPUs in tandem with a discrete GPU if you want to. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the possibilities there um, later on. But very nice motherboard. But moving on here, we have a lot more to unbox. Secondly, memory. Ah, the Flarex, the good old Flarex. Flarex uh, is, is known for having uh, extreme solid guaranteed compatibility with the AM4 platform. This is especially useful uh, and important when uh, the platform first launched last year, because there weren't a lot of memory kits that were validated to work at the rated speeds, but G-Skill uh, brought it home with the Flare X. This is a 16 gigabyte kit, cast latency 14 and 34, 1.35 volts, and we are rocking the 3200 megahertz frequency. That is lovely, lovely. I, I actually, memory is not cheap these days, so I'm glad sometimes they, uh, the manufacturers include it with their packages. And then we have a USB stick, these aren't quite in high demand, but uh, a USB 2.0 AMD branded USB stick. I'm not sure if there are drivers on it. I don't, I don't think so. I think it's probably just blank. So I don't know. I can do a, make a bootable disk or something like that later. Uh, and then we've got the good stuff. Our main event, uh, the Ryzen 3 2200G and 2400G Ryzen 5. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unbox the Ryzen 3 2200G first because um, I actually haven't unboxed it yet. You can see that I've already broken the seal on the 2400G. Uh, this is the one that I have tested so far. 
and I can't say anything else about that, but um, stay tuned for actual benchmarks. I keep saying that. Uh, I need a razor. I will be right back. I am so unprepared for this unboxing. I don't even have a razor. What am I doing? I am a professional. It's okay. And do I even do I even own a razor? Where did the razor go? I have a saw. Okay, we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use Chris's student ID. Uh, I will make sure not to, to show them your picture, even though you look perfectly fine. And we're gonna open it. Oh wow, that just sliced right through there. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, fun fact: you can open CPU boxes with credit cards and your student ID. Multi-tool. That's technically a multi-tool. All right, so. Let's open up this guy. So Ryzen 3 2200G. All right, we've got a four core, four thread part here. So no SMT. Again, this is retailing, I don't know if I mentioned this, $99 US. Very attractive price point for four cores and four threads. A base and boost clock of 3.5 and 3.7 gigahertz respectively. As far as cache goes, we have two megabytes of L2 cache and four megabytes of L3 cache. And as far as the graphic solution, the 2200G is fitted with Radeon Vega 8 graphics. And the 8 also indicates the number of GPU cores. We have eight GPU cores on this guy, on this little guy, there he is. Uh, the, the IHS looks pretty much identical to first gen Ryzen chips that are already available. Alrighty. And additionally, we've got a clock speed, a graphics frequency of 1100 megahertz. And another thing, is that we have an included Wraith Stealth. I think this is the Stealth. I'll put an annotation if I'm wrong. It gets confusing, but this is the little one, the little guy, little Wraith Stealth here. He's adorable and um, looks exactly the same as the existing units that ship with other select Ryzen CPUs. This is not the one with the RGB ring. Uh, it's a very important uh, thing to point out for, for some of you. Uh, it does have a nice black braided cable, four, P four pin PWM connector at the end and uh, pre-applied thermal paste. So you can choose to use that or wipe it off and use your own, up to you. But the other thing, this also brings up a good point, is that this, as well as the Ryzen 5 we're about to look at, uh, have a 65 watt TDP. So very power efficient, and they're not gonna really expel much heat, which means something like this is gonna do just a fine job at uh, cooling it. The other great thing about these APUs is that they're fully unlocked. The multiplier's fully unlocked, and you can actually overclock both the CPU and GPU portions of these units, which is fantastic. You, you can do that within uh, Ryzen Master, the Ryzen Master software from AMD. Um, I'm pretty sure you could also overclock the CPU side uh, straight from the UEFI, like you would a traditional processor. Um, and that's the Ryzen 3 2200G. This is gonna be really great for, for HTPCs where gaming might not be a central focus because the, uh, the graphic solution on here is not quite as powerful as the one found in the Ryzen 5 2400G, which retails for 169 US dollars. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this guy. And I've placed the CPU back inside of the box to simulate a authentic and pure unboxing. I don't really need to check out the Wraith Spire again. And honestly, it's kind of a moot point to show the CPU here because it looks exactly the same as the one we just looked at. But let's talk about this one. What do you get for 70 more dollars over the Ryzen 3 2200G. Well, for starters, you still have the same four cores, but now we've got SMT. So we're getting eight threads, which means this is gonna do a finer job at multi-threaded tasks, perhaps games that can leverage multiple cores, and uh, maybe a bit of uh, light encoding as well. So four cores, eight threads, higher clock speeds out of the box as well, with a base and boost clock of 3.6 and 3.9 gigahertz respectively. And we've also got, again, 65 watt TDP. The, the graphic solution is probably the thing that's gonna sell a lot of people on this as well, is that we're moving up from eight to 11 GPU cores. So this is using Vega 11 graphics. And with that, you also get a higher clock speed on the graphics core at 1250 megahertz. And again, these are, these are overclockable figures, guys. We can push this even further. AMD was showing us some pretty impressive numbers at their press event a few weeks back during CES. And that's it, that's the chip. I mean, so I mean, you know, pairing that with uh, a board like the one we have here, you can have a pretty compact little system. They didn't say, they didn't say we couldn't mount the CPU into the socket. Uh, the embargo does not specify 
that CPU mounting was, was illegal. So guys, finally, for the very first time, we're gonna be able to start using the video outputs on these AM4 motherboards. All of us reviewers kind of already knew that AMD was gonna release APUs uh, for this platform because when the AM4 boards first launched, we saw you know, HDMI and DisplayPort outs, and, and since there's no integrated graphics solution on the first gen Ryzen chips that launched last year, we all kind of figured, okay, they, they've, they've clearly got some plans to, to make some APUs, and here they are, finally ready for launch. It'll be interesting come review day to see just how capable these processors are. First off, uh, for starters, I really wanna see the difference in, in graphical performance between the Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 chips here. And secondly, with GPU prices so high right now, people are gonna consider buying these as a temporary stopgap for, for gaming purposes, mostly I would imagine, until GPU prices come back down. But are these things gonna be able to handle any sort of gaming experience at an adequate and enjoyable level in the first place? Uh, you guys will just have to wait for my review and many others coming soon. And yeah, very exciting stuff. I, I love APUs, I love small form factor mini ITX builds as most of you guys know. So uh, rest assured, we will be doing some major testing with these, some overclocking with these, and definitely some builds as well. So stay tuned for all that guys. That's gonna pretty much wrap it up. That's all I can really say. AMD will cut me off there. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, toss me a like on it. I do appreciate it and it does help me a lot. Let me know what you think of these APUs in the comments below, what your expectations are, what you think of the price points. Again, $99 and $169 for the Ryzen 3 and 5 chips respectively. And that is pretty much a wrap for now, guys. So uh, thank you very much. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you guys in the next video.